All right, everyone, here with head coach Luke Walton. We'll start with James Hale. Hey, Luke, now that we have confirmation that you're back for another season, just what do you want to accomplish this summer? What do you want to accomplish next season with this team? And how happy are you that you're going to get that opportunity uh, to, to go into your third season? Yeah, th th this offseason, like I've been I've been saying the last few days, this offseason is huge for us. Um, we're very excited about the... Uh, the, the progress that a lot of players made this year um, in, in different stretches of the season uh, as far as the way we played as a team uh, is something to really use um, to, to motivate us to, to take that next step. And that next step has to happen this offseason. So, um, you know, what I mean by that is we can't wait until the season comes around to, to start finding our rhythm again. We need to be in the gym in the weight room, working, uh, working on concepts, offensive concepts, defensive concepts. And, and I think we have a group that will. I, I really, you know, I, I love, um, you know, the work ethic of, of these guys and the, and the fact that they want to win. And, uh, you know, it's already, you know, two days and, you know, Tyrese has been in this gym uh, both days in the weight room, on the court shooting. Harrison was in here yesterday. Uh, maybe he beat me in today. I don't know. But, you know, we have guys that are already talking about, look, we're prepping for next season or now. So, uh, the, the, you know, it's, it's the culture you want to see. It's, it's the type of work you want to see. Um, but, it, yeah, James, it's going to be a huge offseason for us. And Luke, almost to a man, all of your players that we've talked to so far pretty much have backed you 100%. Just what does that say about the relationships that you've developed with them and also the culture that you're building there in Sacramento? Well, it's a culture of togetherness. Uh, we have each other's back. Nobody gets all the credit. Nobody gets all the blame. We're in it together. Um, and together, uh, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna start winning again. Um, and, and, you know, I know that 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 takes time and, and, and you know, so you want it right away, but it's just, it, you know, sometimes it happens faster than others. But is, if you have a group of guys that are on the same page and working together, uh, you know, it's going to it's going to happen. So, um, you know, I, I, I love hearing that. I expect to hear that, whether not just about me, but about each other, too. Um, you know, that's you know, that's important to us as a group. So, uh, like I said, the, the, the culture is working. Uh, the, 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 the habits are being built. And now it's about um, continuing on that path to where that starts leading to more uh, to more wins. And then that leads us into a chance to to get into the playoffs. Sean Cunningham. Hey, Luke. Um, I was just wondering, I know these are private conversations that you have both with, with the front offices and the players as these exit interviews and such. But I'm just wondering from each individual, like from players in the front office, maybe you can shed light on just what encourage you most about those discussions that you have as it pertains to the future here. The thing that uh, encouraged me the most is everyone, everyone is ready to take that next step. You can feel it. Um, and, you know, from from the, the conversations and what we need to work on, uh, the awareness of what we're bad at and, and where uh, where as a group we can we can make strides like that's all there and everybody's uh, committed to it. Um, and that's exciting because when, when a group is together and, and, and working towards one goal, you know, great things can happen. So it's like. We're, we're all there. I know people are going their separate ways. Uh, we're going to be in constant communication with them. Coaches are going to be flying all over the country for guys who are out of town. And then we got a good amount of guys that will be in, in town working. So um, uh, it's uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's exciting. Uh, we have a lot of work to do. We got a long way to go, um, but I believe we'll, uh, we're on our way. And then as you look for yourself, I mean, two years here now, and, and obviously having the, the, ability of hindsight and things of that nature just as you kind of move forward what what's the maybe a resource or, or I don't know if it's the right word there but what's, what 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 do you need for yourself and your staff to kind of take you guys to that next level well I think the most important thing is we continue to be consistent I've talked to my staff about things uh where we can get better at as a group um I'll, you know I, I'm not gonna that to me is is more from a, a personal staff meeting room uh, where, you know, I'll individually meet with all my staff uh, as this, uh, you know, off season goes. Um, but we've already done, a, you know, one full staff meeting. We'll do another. We have another one on the books tomorrow. And 
uh, yeah, there's things as a staff we can we can definitely do better, and we're gonna make we're gonna address those and work on those and, and come back um, uh, and come back better ourselves. Marshall Harris. Hey Luke, I'm I'm just curious because <clears throat> obviously you've been coaching for a while now. Um, whether it's your experience, uh, I guess most successful experience with the Warriors um, and the Lakers, and now here, just has anything majorly changed? Just your maybe not philosophy, but the way you go about your business uh, based on the de uh, varying degrees of success that you've had. I, I missed the first part, Marshall. What's the what's I, the I was just asking about because of your coaching experience and having different degrees and levels of success, depending on where you've been, whether it's the Warriors, Lakers and here, has there been anything major change? Maybe not, maybe philosophically, but maybe not philosophically, just in the way you go about your business uh, in your learning curve uh, as a head coach. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you, you, if you're not learning from your experiences, then uh, you're wasting opportunities and um you know, I, I think we're one of the, the big things I've I've really experienced and felt is the difference between coaching uh, and playing on on different caliber teams now uh, and where that where we are along that path and what's most important. Um, and, and for me right now, what's most important for our group is habits, behavior, work ethic, togetherness. And when and I felt like we made a lot of progress with those things. Uh, as the season continued to go on. Uh, and, and when th that becomes just part of how you perform every night, uh, then start to put more focus on, on the, you know, the nuances of the game, the details, the, the counters to what we're trying to do uh, offensively if they're taking something away. Uh, but until, uh, you know, you have a, a group that's trying to get into that, that playoff race, um, until you – you establish some of those core basic ideas. Um, a lot of the, 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 the higher level, you know, schemes and play calling, that's not, that, 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 that that's not as important as it is for some of those uh, top level teams. And, and just following up because you said that, and because we've heard so much uh, just from Monty just a little while ago from your players, as they've talked about it, and you through the course of the season, uh, the issues on defense uh, and as that went across the season, <clears throat> when you look at it now, is it more for you uh, at the NBA level guarding the, the best offensive players in the world? Is it more of a habit thing, an effort thing or a scheme? I mean, what, what, what do you look at as being the main, uh, the main problem um, when, when teams have stretches of bad defense, like you guys, obviously where you finished uh, league wide at, at the end of the season? Yeah, it's a little bit. Um, it's a little bit of a, 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 of everything on that on from the defensive end with those things that you talk about, um, because part of it is habits, right? Like we we have a terrible we have terrible habits as far as we open up and give up direct line drives way too often uh, to have a consistent uh, a, a consistent defense. Um, so that's a habit. Now some of those times that's a bad habit from one player, but from another player, it might be a, a, an effort thing because they have a better habit with that. Um, the schemes are normally what I found is like, if you, if you're doing, if you have the right habits and you're playing with the right effort, the scheme is going to be good enough. And uh, you know, sometimes at this league, you play great defense and offenses are still going to score on you. Um, but we have to, you know, what we have to do is be able to guard the ball better and protect the rim better. And, and those are two things that, uh, when we were we, we we did that well, you know, we won games and our defensive numbers weren't awful. Uh, when we didn't do those things, unless we were going to score 130 night, we weren't we weren't really giving ourselves a chance to win. So, um, you know, on, on ball defense and, and protecting our rim are, are two things that our, our players know are going to be really big. Um, and, and it's tougher to work on defense in the offseason, but you can work on it. You can watch film. You can get stronger. Um, when you're playing pickup in your in your local gym, uh, you can in, like really engage in the idea of working on those things. So, uh, you know, th that's where we're going to make a big jump. Jason Jones. Yeah. Hey, Luke. Uh, one of the things Harrison talked about was, you know, maturity, accountability, kind of some of those other those things that come when we would experience just where do you see the group in those areas in terms of holding each other accountable and having the maturity to implement the things you're talking about as far as the discipline and the habits 
Yeah, we're getting better, Jason. Uh, and Harrison's absolutely right with that. Um, and it's, uh, it, it is getting better. It's not where it needs to be. Um, but it's, it, it is, it, it's definitely on the, um, you know, going in the right direction and, and players as this, there was, there was great moments this season when it was happening. Uh, and that's natural when you're, you know, you're kind of empowering players to, to engage in that. That's not comfortable. It's not easy, especially for when some of your best players are your younger players um, to, 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 speak up and talk to older veterans or your team as a whole night in and night out like that. Now we did have some very nice moments when, when that did happen. Um, and, and that's where we're, we're going to continue to push them and continue to empower them uh, as players to, to really embrace that, uh, that ownership. I think De'Aaron mentioned today too, about kind of how hard it is to play at that high level. You know, he was you know, twice player of the week, but to stay at that level, is really tough. What do you think he learned about just staying at that level and how to maintain that? What he put it was, when I'm not great, I still got to be good. I can't you know, just drop off too far on the other nights. Just what do you think you learned from the effort on both ends of the court to stay at that level over the course of an entire season? Yeah, it's, it's great. Um, it's great. You know, it's one of my things I'm most excited about De'Aaron is his awareness and his, uh, you know, his intelligence of, of the game and, and just, you know, how it's played. Um, and for him to gain that experience and to gain that knowledge of like, oh, OK, this is me playing at this level and this is how hard it is. And now this is, you know, when I do slump off a little bit. Um, you know, only he can answer that question. I never, I never got to that level as a, as a player. Uh, so it's, you know, for, for guys that are special enough to, to be able to do what he can do, um, they have to live through that. And then they ha that has to motivate them to be like, listen, that that's, you know, you hear players talk about all the time with the playoffs. Once they get there, they're like, I don't ever want to not be here again. And it's the same. So you go through that as a player individually and you're like, I'm at this level right now. I don't, that's where I want to, that's where I want to live all the time. Now, how do I motivate? What does it take me to do this off season uh, to give myself a better chance? So the fact he lived through that and got that experience uh, is great for him and for, for us, as far as the future is concerned. Tony Harvey. Hey, Coach Walton. Um, just getting back to you, you know, you being uh, retained. Um, and I just want to, you know, when did you know that you were going to be retained before the season was over, after the season was over? And then what was the conversations like uh, with uh, Monty, if you could spell that out for us too? Yeah, I mean, I keep my conversations with uh, Monty private, but, you know, I I was under contract. So I, I wasn't asking. I, I told you guys before I was confident I wasn't going anywhere. We have a job to do and, and I'm going to always focus on what I feel is best for the team um, and, and and things that I that we as a team and, and coaching staff and players can control. So that's where my mind and my focus is at. So uh, I was under contract and I'm, I expect to, you know, I expected to be here um, coaching and, and working with our guys this offseason. Um, as well. So, um, yeah, during, I mean, during the season, I, that's, that's where my, my head is at and that's where my energy and time is going to. Well, obviously, uh, rhetorically, you know, winning victories is, you know, about the bottom line here, but, uh, what expectations other than, you know, we talk about the defensive scheme, you know, the culture of togetherness, what other expectations Monty have coming from you going into this next season that he'd like to see? going going into next season yeah going i mean yeah the, our, the expectations like look we know like this we know what the what the drought has been and we know what what our goal is going to be going into the season and that's that's to make the playoffs um and, and now that's where it's you know you, you you i'll bring it up now it's you know the off season is good to have these these bigger goals out there um but it's like i said all the time during the season how do you achieve the bigger goals? You have smaller goals and you work on those every single day. Uh, and that's where you keep your focus at. Um, so, the, you know, for the off season, our big goal is yes, going into next season, we want to make the playoffs. Um, our best chance to do that is to work our tails off every day on the details of the game. Uh, this, this, uh, this off season is to watch the playoffs, to watch these teams, what they're doing, uh, the anger of losing, not being part of this, 
uh, using that to motivate. And that's where, that's where our effort and energy will be uh, for the off season, our needs to be. This makes sense. Hey, what's up, Luke? Um, obviously, it can be challenging when the person who hired you is no longer here, but you've had some time to work with Monty now. What, what has that relationship been like working with him and how has that evolved since he first arrived? Yeah, it's, it's been good. Um, it's, it's hard uh, because it's, you know, you, you're hired by a certain staff and you have a relationship with that staff and you're in that together. Uh, so that part is definitely a challenge. Um, and, you know, Monty and I didn't know each other at all when he took over. Um, and like any relationship, it's, your trust is earned and built. Uh, and so it took, you know, it took us both actively uh, engaging each other, uh, talking every day on the phone if we're on the road, meeting in person. Um, and as the season went, that relationship got good. Um, and it's, 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 a, it's a healthy relationship where I don't mind telling him anything uh, and he doesn't mind telling me. You know, we understand what our jobs are and what our roles are. Um, but that is, to me, that's the best type of, of, of working relationship you can have. And, uh, you know, it's, it's so, you know, it's like I said, it's, it's, it's in a good place. Um, and I think we both trust and respect each other. And we're, we're both committed to the same thing, which is building a winning team uh, here in Sacramento. And I know this could change based on personnel, but ideally, what, what, what do you want this identity to be? And, and how, do you, how do you get there? On from what what standpoint do from a uh, perspective defense. like if people are coming to Sacramento playing the Kings what 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 do you want them to to know they're walking into when they take on your team and yeah I I mean I think you felt it a little bit this year and, and it didn't end in wins a lot but like there was a lot of uh, you know we had our fair uh, you know fair share of stretches there but you know there was a lot of coaches that were coming up after games and telling me like your team plays hard. Like they, you, you push it defensively. They're, you know, like they're, they're competing and that's what we want. And, and now we have to get better at, you know, some of the execution and, and whatnot. Um, but that's what we want. We want that, you know, we want anytime you, you get done playing us, it's like, dang, that was a battle. That was really hard. They, you know, they were pushing the ball down or, you know, pushing the ball at us all game defensively. They're up and into us. And, um, I think offensively we did a better job this year than that defensively, uh, but there was times in uh, you know throughout the season that defensively we did give that type of um, that type of energy out there, uh, and it was good. It was good to see. But yeah, that's what we want. We want people being dead tired when they're done playing us. Jason Anderson. Well, good to see you today, sir. Um, you know, I, I've kind of asked you about this before, but I'll ask again with the the. The team's defense, your defensive rating in those last 13 games was ninth in the NBA, um, you know, but it's been such a struggle for really two, three years here. Um, so, again, you know, when you look at the core, how come it hasn't – how come the core group here hasn't been able to lock in and play that kind of defense when you can just put this patchwork group of guys together for 13 games and they can, they can play some defense? Yeah, well, I mean, I think you're looking at part of it is, um, you know, the 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 core of what's what's being built here is a lot of young players. Mm -hmm. and young players normally uh, figure out offense a lot sooner than they figure out defense. So, you know, you start playing vets like Delon and Mo uh, with length and understanding of, um, you know. And two guys that a lot of what they've done in this league is because of what they do on defense. Um, you know, that then your defensive numbers are gonna are gonna start to to pick up. I think, you know, also with that, you know, D Jones having that some more size in there and him getting more comfortable um with what we were trying to do scheme wise helped. Um and you know, for some of the, the younger players, part of it is your body naturally takes longer to mature and, and to, to fill out. Uh, you're trying to figure out what the league is still. There's a lot of different schemes. There's a lot of different tendencies uh, of, of players. Like I could go down to Mo Harkless right now and ask him about any player he's covered in the last eight years. And I'm sure he would know all of his tendencies with young players that you might know some of the kids you played against in college. And that's about it. So uh, some of it just Jason comes with time and strength and understanding uh, on that, on that end. 
Um, was it, was it just sort of personnel that allowed you to kind of pressure the ball more late in the season? We saw. It seems like we saw more of that late, and yeah. it, it worked for you. No, um, honestly, I thought we did a better job of it. We had a um, a meeting in Utah, and we lost the game, but we came out really, uh, and we're, we're you know we took the coaches out, and the players kind of did their thing. Um, and watched our previous game together. Uh, and we, I thought that was kind of a big step for us because it was players only talking about what we need to do, what they need to do better uh, as far as on the defensive end. And we came out and got off to a really good start in that Utah game. I think we were up 10 or 13 early in Utah. And I thought like that was a good, a good point, a, a, a step for our group. And, and that's when we still had, we were still healthy and we were still playing uh, those same guys. So, you know, from there, there was some nice moments, some bad moments, but I, I really think like that's where um, we, you know, we started getting into the ball more, uh, uh, more effectively, more of the time. And yeah, to, that's a big point for us going into next season is our pickup point and constantly uh, being up into that, into the ball on, on defense, Jason. Um, just a few more. We'll go to Jim Conlin, RCB Sport Ireland. Hi, Luke. I suppose the NBA draft last year was very kind to the Sacramento Kings. You got a, in a number 11 pick, you got a top five player, really, in Tyrese Halliburton, who should have gone an awful lot higher. How important is going to be the draft this year in terms of that? And is it more you're looking for a more center, a big man? Because you have Buddy, you have... Uh, Tyrese, you have Fox in the backcourt. Is it? Are you looking for a, a potential Jamal Wiseman or someone like that in this year's NBA draft? Yeah, I mean, that, uh, you're right. Where this, you know, it, the draft is big for us. Um, you know, it's a big part of you know for us building. You look at the guys, uh, you know, from you know, De'Aaron and, and, and Tyrese, and what it can mean when you draft uh, like those guys, um, and. What I can tell you is I don't know where we're picking. I don't know who's going to be available and that uh, Monty and his crew got it right for sure last year. And uh, I, I have all the faith in them in the world. When we start to get to where we're at and what players are available, uh, I always give my opinion as, you know, what I think the type of person we need, but they've been watching these guys all year. The scouts have. So uh, we let them do their job and we trust they'll, they'll do it well. Um, and, and that's up to the, you know, the front office and the scouts to make that, that pick. And I suppose, Luke, when you see franchises like the New York Knicks have the season they had and no one was expecting it uh, in terms of finishing in the playoffs uh, so high up, does that give belief to you when you see all these super teams have been put together like the Nets and the Lakers, for example, that if you get your groundwork and homework right, there's no reason why you can't be the New York Knicks next year? Yeah, I mean, look, it's basketball. And everyone that plays in the league is good. Now, it's there's some teams that have multiple stars that it's a uh, it's going to be a lot uh, smoother for them to get there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's why you go out and you play the games. It's you know, you, the Knicks are a great example of what can happen. Um, you know, when when you give you're playing as a team and and with a purpose, uh, and so uh, I think that's a, a great example of where teams can go without multiple. Uh, superstars and, and still and still have success and I think that's what we're tr we're building here and we're you know the path that we're trying to get on uh, as a as a group Matt George hey Luke a couple things uh, first off I was hoping for some clarification you mentioned the goal being to make the playoffs next year is that by any means necessary including the play-in or is that like shooting for seeds eight through six or does it matter um yeah, yeah we want to be part of the postseason uh, I, I'm not if we're in nine or ten I'm not gonna sit here and be disappointed like <laughs> we're our we're goal is to be playing um meaningful game i mean not they're all games are meaningful but in the in in part of the the, the post season which is uh yes the play-in as well and then one of the things you've talked a lot about i know you mentioned defense is tough to work on during the off season but you've brought up physicality uh at many times this season is that something that is possible to work on during the off season is it is it is more of a mental thing? Is it a weight room thing? How do you work on improving physicality during an off season? 
Yeah, there's different ways. Uh, weight room is a big one. Um, sign up, take some boxing classes. That's I've, I've seen players and, and uh, teammates do that. Um, you know, you can do uh, – there's mental training you can do. But, you know, there's lots of – Lots of apps out there. So there's different ways to, to train and to get bigger, to get stronger, to, to, uh, to feel the contact. Um, so, that, yeah, there's different ways to, to, to improve on that. All right, just a couple more. Scott Marsh. Coach, just uh, wanted to follow up with Rashawn. Obviously, you, you had a lot of confidence in him when he came to the team, putting him into the starting lineup, and, and he earned it because he had two really good seasons here. Um, I know it might be a little bit more for Monty, but I just wanted to get your perspective in terms of the priority and importance of bringing Rashawn back. Yeah, we, I, I love Rashawn, and you're absolutely right. Uh, he earned he earned it, uh, and, and uh, he's had a, um, a really nice uh, two-year stretch here with us, um, especially if you look into those close games, what he does for us, whether it's offensive rebounds or switching on to big-time players and getting stops for us. Um, he, he's been great. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's definitely a, a, a front office question, but you know, Monty knows how much, how, you know, I, I can tell you, I feel very strongly about Rashawn and what he means, uh, to our team, but you know, they're clear. They got more than they, they have a lot. They're, they're looking at number wise and all of that. So, um, I give them my opinions. They make the decisions. Crystal Saltis. Hello coach. How are you? Good. Great. I would like to ask you, speaking about the potential and the, the progress of that team during the second half of the season especially, what is the biggest takeaway take for you and what would you like to build on that? Well, we want to build everything. Uh, you know, we want to, we want to um, you know, you, you, you talk about the the consistency a lot um i think jason touched on it with with the Aaron. like we want to be we want to be good and then when we're having off nights we we don't want to drop down that that low like we have to be more consistent of a team uh and, and how do you do that we get better at rebounding uh we get better at guarding the ball we get better at uh, defending without fouling so that there's not you know just these waves that we're going through um but yeah we'll look at everything again this summer we'll go through all the um all the tape again and and then we'll we'll you know we'll really continue to to um to hone in on like what's most important to our team what are we best at and where do we go into next season and that's kind of where we're at right now and also is is there any specific moment or any specific reaction that uh, made you made you said that this team have uh, got it or the future is bright for that group Yeah, there's a lot of examples. Um, and I, 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 you know, I've given them, you know, there's De'Aaron and, and the, the, you know, winning Western Conference Player of the Year uh, of the Western Conference Player of the Week twice um, this season. I mean, that's not easy to do that in the West. I mean, the West has got all NBA everywhere and all like for him to do that twice is really exciting. Um, the play of Tyrese, a, a rookie that had a week of prep you know, going into, into his first season and what he did, the, the type of season Harrison Barnes was putting together, um, watching Buddy play make and get seven, eight assists multiple times down the final stretch of the season as other guys were going out, um, you know, and, you know, Marvin before he got hurt in that Charlotte game and the progress he was making, like, these are all things to me as a coach, I'm very excited about uh, and, 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 you know, are great to build around. Okay. Thank you, Coach. All right. Thanks.